Well, a very, very good morning to you. We are still learning more on defining or identifying yourself. Huh? The idea of uh, getting to know who you are, what you stand for, what your identity is, and what roles do you stand by, and so on, and so on. Huh? Those are what you can call the building blocks or foundation of this journey called life. Welcome back, Mr. Silas. Thank you so much. So I'll continue from where we left. So when we talk of identity, basically, uh, we are talking about that which uh, compresses. And compresses actually our memories, our experiences, relationships, values, and also anything that constitutes to our sense of self. And so that's what we are talking about mainly. And so when all this is put together, it helps us to identify ourselves as who we really are. There is a definition of a self that I really like by Eric Erickson. He's one of the fathers of psychology. And uh, he also, he, he coined a, a term that he called ego identity. Uh, which he conceived as an enduring and continuous sense of who a person is. Enduring and continuous sense of who a person is. The ego identity helps to emerge all the different versions, to merge all the different versions of oneself. That is, you know, you look at yourself like a professional, you look at yourself like a, a young man, you look at yourself as a young woman, you look at yourself as a Christian, you look at yourself as a mother, as a father. All these concepts put together, all these aspects put together, they actually uh, come to what we are calling identity. So it is all that is enduring and that continues to, uh, uh, to identify, I mean, that which continues to, to make you identify with. And so that's why it's very essential that we be talking about identity. Now, um, um, I, I had mentioned already how we pick identities from various aspects, but, but basically in a simple way, what I'm trying to say is we, we pick our identity or we learn our identity or we form our identity based on various things. For example, environment that we grew up. That is one key area that actually contributes a lot in terms of forming our values forming our identity. If you're growing up in an environment where love is a common word and expression, then growing up, you're carrying that, knowing that first of all, you loved, but also at the same time, loving others, because you already know that this is a way of life. If you grow up in an environment where people are constantly fighting, where conflict are resolved by fighting, then wherever you find yourself, you will find, you will begin to inculcate, you'll begin to cultivate, you'll begin to uh, express, to manifest, you know, that very idea of resolving the conflicts. And so that's why you see even in marriages, people are fighting when something happens, uh, they're slapping, there's all manner of fighting, and we have seen even people killing others, because they grew up knowing if you are in a state of conflict or argument, the only way to resolve an argument, if you are dissatisfied, it is by attacking your opponent. Instead of listening to them and trying to understand their school of thoughts and then probably try to bring in your own school of thoughts as well and then agree on something, you find yourself fighting. You find yourself, you know, breaking things. There are people who get angry and they break everything, you know, and, and we have seen those scenarios uh, happening probably even in our lives. So if that is what you witness on a daily basis, then it means in your life as you try to resolve conflicts, may it be at workplace, may it be at home may it be even in the church, you will realize that you're using a lot of force, 
a lot of energy, a lot of aggressiveness. These are things that you have learned. And so this is why you hear people say that I don't like anyone crossing my path. <laughs> you know, uh, the path, particularly, you know, the path is not yours because it is a path is not yours. Uh, it is put there for others. So the fact that you are walking on that path, you, you shouldn't be prepared that also there are other people will be crossing those paths. But then the moment you declare that no one should cross my path, what you are saying is, um, I am so entitled and I am aggressive. And if you try to do anything that is against my way of thinking, then I will attack you. And so these are values that we learn along the way. So the other way is family. Of course, family, even from the teachings of the church, the church tells us that uh, family is the domestic church. That at the family, whatever we do in the family, that is what we will manifest in the church. So if the family is sick and broken, the church will be sick and broken. Because the church is still both divine and human. And so there is a human contribution uh, to what happens in the church. And so if my values, the values that I have, are not very strong values, are not very good values, then at the end of it, so that those are the very values that I will carry in the church. If I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning uh, um, um, information to become a priest, and then I come from a family where people lie to survive, then it means I will also be there and I'm lying. You imagine of a priest uh, lying also to survive, you know, uh, because that is what they have learned in their lives. And so sometimes people look at them and start wondering, why are you lying? Or you are a president and you grew up in a, in a culture where if something um, happens, uh, I mean, the only way to resolve a problem is by punishing someone. So you become a president and you put everybody who comes against you into prison. And so these are things that we learn along the way. And so it's very essential that we really get to a place where we realize that identity is everything that we do. It determines everything. There is nothing that you do without bringing in your identity, without bringing in your values. That's why you will see teachers, you have gone through the same technical training. But after the technical training that you went through or whatever um, program you went through, you go to work and you realize one teacher is, um, is, is more teacher than the other. And so you're wondering, why are you uh, teaching in this manner? Why is it that children like you? Why is it that students like you? Why is it that they understand more when you teach? Not because you're really the most intelligent person. Not because you know to communicate really more than in, anyone else. But you bring in yourself into your career. So even as a psychologist, I bring in who I am into what I do. Even as a priest, I bring in what I am uh, into my priesthood. Even as a parent, I bring who I am into my parent parenting. So we do not go to parent empty. We do not go to become a priest empty. We do not go to become a catechist empty. I don't become a psychologist empty. I come in loaded with my experiences of life. And this experience is the experience of my identity, is the experience of my values. That is what I bring. So if I have positive values, then those are the values that I'll bring into what I do. If I have negative values, then that's what I'll bring into what I do. For example, if you hand people say that I am rejected, or in other words, I'm a reject. Every time they get into a relationship, they will be in it for two months. And then that relationship ends. And someone will just jolt out. Someone will just uh, check out. And you wonder, why did they check out? They didn't even, even give you an indicator. They didn't even tell you that they are checking out. They just checked out. And so you're left to think, what is my problem? Am I the problem or it is, is it the other person? And because they didn't tell you that um, you are the problem, you, you, you are left speculating. Maybe I didn't this, maybe I didn't the other thing, maybe I lack this, maybe I don't look like this. And therefore, at the end of it all, this is why we see people hitting gym because they feel they were left because they didn't have good shape. Without realizing that we have seen people, sorry to say, <laughs> uh, we have seen people who are leaving uh, someone who has all manner of shapes that we'll be looking for, you know, and they go for someone who's, who doesn't have even any of that. Because when someone decides to leave, they are not leaving uh, because they are looking for, I mean, because they lacked something. It's because there is something they want. So they leave for their own reasons. They don't leave because of you. Because also we have seen people who are living with others and they are not, not the best, but you live with them. Because you understand part of probably living in that relationship is trying to accommodate the other person. But when you have no room to accommodate the other, it means you can't live with them. 
Because I'm sure even with yourself, there are things that you try to accommodate and you can't. So when you find yourself in such situations, uh, I mean, how, how difficult will it be uh, to accommodate another person? So um, it, it's very essential to understand then you're bringing in who you really are. You'll be bringing in your values. You're bringing in your identity. So people get to that place whereby they start, you know, looking down on themselves because they are thinking and they are feeling that this person left me because of this and the other thing. You go and hit gym, you achieve the whatever shape you wanted, but the person still doesn't like you. We have seen others who think maybe it's the, because of the skin of their color. You go and bleach yourself, change everything, and at the end of it all you come and the person still doesn't change the way they look at you. Because they have not valued you for who you are, and you have not valued yourself for who you are. Especially people who are rejected. If you give what you have, so if rejection is what you're loaded with, is what you carry wherever you are, then it means whoever you come into contact with, you will try to sell a bit of idea of who you are. That is someone who is rejected. And therefore, you will probably try. Let's say, for example, you try to, you know, you're trying to really please the other person. You can stoop so low just, just, just for them not to leave you because you have been rejected so many times. You don't want to be rejected again. And therefore, you end up getting into a place that you are doing very, very, you know, um, debased uh, things. You, 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 you lower yourself so that the other person can accept you. The truth is no one will accept you unless they want to accept you. That is the truth. Because we see, like, for example, we can learn from the parents. You have children. Some of them are drunkard, others are in drugs, others are excelling very well. They are doing so well in their areas of life, their careers, their families. But a parent will love all these children equally. So if a parent is able to love these children equally, why do they love them? It's because they have vowed. They have, they have values of love. They have values of care. They have values of, uh, you know, those humane values. And those are the ones that they use to, t to love their children. Those are the values that they use so that they don't have to kind of uh, disintegrate, you know, their, their family. This is simply because they have chosen to love their children. So when someone chooses to accept you, it is their choice. It's not you who make them choose you. It's not you who make them accept you. It is their choice to accept you. It is their choice to love you. It is their choice to stay with you, not you. So, but when you believe that you are rejected, then you go and sell that idea that I am rejected and ultimately they reject you. But of course, because you believe in rejection, you are looking for every small indicator, even the remotest of it all, that will show you that someone is about to reject you. So that you go or you run or you check out or you try to arrest the situation by giving yourself entirely to someone so that they don't reject you. You cannot earn love. Someone don't, does not love you uh, because you did something. It, that's what we are taught in Christianity. God says in his word that I have loved you with an everlasting love. Why does he say so? It's because you, do, you don't have to do anything to be loved. And this is one simple question that I ask. For example, when you are in your mother's womb, what did you do to be loved by your mother? What did you really do? D do did you give your mother anything? Did you do any action and your mother loved you? If your mom loved you when you're in the womb, without you doing anything, it means then you're loved because of your being and not because of what you have or what you do. And so as we talk, when we get into a place where our thoughts, our mindset, our belief system, our values, our identity is erroneous, then every other thing that we do in life will have a little bit of that error. And that's why St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that if you lose it from the beginning or if you get it wrong from the beginning, you will get it wrong all the way. If you get it wrong in the foundation, you will get it wrong in the finishing. So at the end of it, all, the whole building will have some weaknesses here and there because the foundation is not strong. So your values, your identity is your foundation. And so it's important you really work on this area. So already I know you're asking then, what can I do for me to be able to have a, a, a pure identity that belongs to me? Identity is not something you're given. It is something you are. There's a state of being. There's a state of having. There's a state of doing. And some of us uh, define ourselves like this. We do what we do 
and what we have defines who we are. And that is what even the society tried to teach us. But that is error. You are not you are you, you are not absent. Then you came to be through your doing and your being. I mean your having. You came to be first, then you are able to do and to have. You cannot possess something if you're not there yourself. Just like I cannot be in this studio and not be in this studio at the same time. So if I'm I'm out, I'm out. If I'm in, I'm in. 